There's spaces in between the bars. It doesn't matter. Technically, um, because it's a discrete distribution, technically, it looks like it looks like this. Okay. Technically, because only you can only get zero, one, or two. You can't get anything in between. You can't get one and a half heads or 1.7 heads, okay? So whether I put spaces in between the bars or not, it's not, there's not really a, anything in between, okay? Uh, and we can, we, if we increase this, so let's say I flip the coin um, four times, okay? Zero, one, two, three, or four. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> probability thing is going to look kind of like this, okay? Or whether you make that, um, that more and more and more, okay? And as you get more and more, so if you, we did y equals 20 coin flips, okay? And we can get anywhere from 0 all the way up to 20. Okay, where 10 is in the middle, but 11 and nine are both pretty likely. You get um, you can get a distribution that looks like this. Okay, and at a certain point, you can start seeing that my, my illustration is not so good, but. Um, a normal curve seems to fit the, um, the probabilities of the binomial distribution. Okay. And it does. It does. And so the rule of thumb
Other textbooks will say NP greater than or equal to 10. Um, so depending on what textbook you read, you might see a different number here. Okay, N times 1 minus P. Also bigger than 10. Okay, but we're going to go with 5. That's good enough for us. So a binomial distribution. normal distribution is defined by mu and sigma. Okay. So if you're given a binomial distribution and you want to approximate it using a normal distribution, we can, okay? So, for example, uh, like why would we even want to do this, all right? What if I said we've got, um, I'm going to flip a coin 40 times. Okay, so we're going to play some silly game. So you get to you flip a coin 40 times, and if you get um, 28 heads or more, you win a prize. Okay, win a prize if you see 28 heads or more. Okay, so n is equal to 40, p is equal to 0.5, and we win if y is greater than or equal to 28. Is that okay? <coughs> if I wanted to solve this with the binomial distribution, this would be a big pain in the butt. Why? Because I would have to figure out the probability y equals it to 28, plus the probability that y equals 29, plus the probability y equals 30, all the way up to the probability that y equals 40. And every single one of these is going to be what? 40 choose 28, 0.5 to the 28, times 0.5 to the 12, plus 40 choose 29, Etc. 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 Okay. I mean, our saving grace is that 0.5 and 0.5 can be combined, and everything's going to be 0.5 to the 40th. But that's still a bunch of work that we don't really want to do. Okay. So we could ask. Uh, we have a couple options. One is we could ask a computer to do it. A computer can do this rather quickly. No, it doesn't mind. Or we can uh, approximate it with a normal distribution. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we, can, we can approximate this with a normal distribution. Okay? And again, just to check our rule of thumb to make sure that it is reasonable to use the normal distribution, we do n times p, and we get 40 times 0.5 equal to 20, and we get n times 1 minus p, and we also get 20 there. Okay. So both of those numbers are bigger than 5, so this says we are okay to approximate this situation with a normal distribution. Okay. So how shall we normal distribution, okay? Well, the binomial distribution is defined by n and p. Normal distribution is defined by mu and sigma. All 
right. Do you guys remember for a binomial, what is the mean mu? The mean, how do we get the mean of a binomial? N times P. And how do we get the standard deviation? Square root of N times P times 1 minus P. Okay? So if we have N and P from the binomial distribution, we can get values to use for mu and sigma for the normal distribution. Okay, use these. here being, uh, I'm going to draw, draw bars here, okay. we've got this thing that looks like the normal distribution, and we're going to try to approximate it, I mean, th this binomial distribution, we're going to try to approximate it using the normal distribution. According to this, my mu is, uh, is 20, it's 40, n is 40, and p is 0.5, so I get mu is equal to 20, and my standard deviation is equal to the square root of 40 times 0.5 times 0.5, so I get the square root of 10 here, and uh, that's like 3 point something. getting 28 or more. Okay. So we can, it might seem like I would just use y equals 28 and go. Okay. But there's an extra step that we have to uh, have to do here. Okay. So just imagine, remember, the binomial distribution is discrete. I can't get 28 and a half, I can't get 27 and a half. I'm either going to get 27 heads or 28 heads. I can't get anything in between. Okay. So just imagine I've got a bar centered at 28. Okay. And next to that bar, I've got a bar for, uh, centered at 27 right there, and I've got a bar centered at 29. If I want to approximate this discrete distribution with a continuous one, okay, the continuous one allows for things to be in between. But in discrete, we can't be in between 27 and 28. Okay? Just imagine I've got a bar centered at 28, and I want to shade the entire bar in. I don't want to just shade in 28 and to the right, but I want to get actually everything this entire bar. Okay. Can you guys see that? So if that's the case, where should I draw my cutoff line? I'm not going to draw it at 28, but I'm going to draw it at 27 and a half, exactly. Okay. So I draw my cutoff <coughs> because I will win if I get 28 or more.
continuity correction, okay? And it's, we use it whenever we're trying to approximate a discrete distribution with a continuous one. Because okay? discrete, you can only take on these finite values. But with a continuous distribution, the continuous distribution assumes you can take everything on in between, but we can't. So, so this is the continuity correction. And this is where things like greater than, greater than, or equal to make a, make a big difference, okay? So over here I said we win if y is greater than or equal to 28. In that case, we draw a cutoff at 27.5. Illustration being, here I've got 28, here I've got 27, and here I have 29. There are bars here, okay? And I want to include all of 28, all of 29, and everything beyond. Okay. But if I had just changed it ever so slightly to say when at y greater than 28, where would I draw my cutoff? Okay, so if I want y greater than 28, I would draw my cutoff at 28.5 because I want to put only the bars for 29 and higher. Okay. So, uh, and then things flip around when you say y less than some number or y less than or equal to some number. Okay. So, what I find helpful for me is to kind of draw these imaginary bars and say, do I want to include this bar as part of my, my shaded thing, or do I not want this bar in my shaded area? Questions? I just don't understand why we're filling in from 27.5 to 28.5 when we know it can't it's, um, it's because we're trying, so the discrete distribution underlying only allows 27 or 28. But we are trying to approximate this with a continuous thing, okay? And the continuous thing um, Equal to 2.379. Or 2.37. Okay, 2.372. Alright? 
So, what is the area beyond that? Okay. So, what's the area to the right? Probability that z is greater than or equal to 2.37. Well, that's the area to the left of negative 2.37, and I get 0 0.0089. Approximation to the binomial. Right. And the key there is just double check to make sure it's reasonable to use the normal approximation, meaning n times p and n times 1 minus p is bigger than 5. And then use this as your mean and this as your standard deviation from the normal distribution. And then you have to figure out your cutoff based on this continuity correction. It's either going to be plus, five, plus 0.5 or minus 0.5, okay? And I think it always helps to draw a picture to decide whether we're going plus or minus 0.5. And then you carry on like a normal distribution problem. Okay, so with our last uh, half hour, 